അനക്കൊണ്ട നാവിഗേറ്റർ What about others? Mom. Okay, as we go on with the classes, I will be giving assignments. You can do that and show me the result if it is executable or if you have if you get any errors you can tell me and we can solve it together so let me start with how to create a new uh, jupiter notebook as we were discussing yesterday once you open your once you launch your jupiter notebook this is the screen you will get here in your desktop you can create a new folder i have created internship 2020 as you can this here you can go to this button you will get multiple options in that i'll be selecting python 3 given you a name to your and this will be your cells with where we can execute your instructions as uh, i'll just brush up few things uh, in from yesterday's class so we have uh, discussed that python as a general uh, purpose programming language it has its own interpreter and it is uh, the why it has wide range of applications like it can be used in website design, web web applications it can be used in desktop applications mm -hmm. and for software development and we have seen that it supports automatic garbage collection which means that it will be deleting unwanted objects if it is not used to free up the memory location and we have seen that it can be uh, we have discussed that it can be integrated with other languages other than this uh, one more um, uh, feature or important feature in of python programming is that it can it can follow two types of programming styles one is functional and structural based another is oops based oops concepts and that it uh, where we have uh, where we use objects and classes whereas functional and structural and that similar to your c programming where you'll be using functions variables etc so pythonally you can pro, uh, python programming na you functional agu madbodu as well as oops concepts use madkon kuda madbodu oops concepts which uh, python supports are encapsulation inheritance polymorphism all this is possible using python language where um, another language which is, which comes under oops concepts is c++ and c will come under functional and structural programming style so we'll be seeing both uh, we'll be working with functions as well as methods and objects and classes now we'll start with programming a uh, python has as discussed a uh, python has several data types and containers becoming familiar with them is essential to uh, use uh, python language efficiently and it is a good starting point to start learning any new language so a few elements of python are which will be discussing are data types
and operators. Before going to identifiers, variables, or data types, there is one more small concept that is reserved words or keywords. Are you guys familiar with keywords? What are keywords? Keywords or reserved words, Andra? They are. Yeah, correct. The, those are the examples for reserved words. So, what it means is they have a certain functionality. So, you cannot use those words for in any other way. For example, if has to be used in if statements itself, while has to be used for the purpose, int and float will be for, the, for describing what type of data it is. If you, you cannot use them elsewhere in your program, they are reserved and should be used only there. Uh, one more uh, feature in uh, feature of Python is that it is case sensitive. So capital S and small s are, will have two different va values and two different meanings. So even the keywords are case sensitive. That is, um, for example, You can see true, false, and none are the three keywords which which start with a capital letter that is uppercase. Rest all reserved words will be in smaller cases. The only three keywords which are in uppercase letters are true, false, and none. True and false are true true values in Python. They're the results of comparison or logical operations to results so for example one is greater than six we are getting output as false that is operation um, comparison operation after that and it is returning the value as false similarly here one is equal to one it is true the statement is true and hence I'm getting the output as true this is a keyword and I cannot use it for any other purpose Similarly, I can use logical operators and Tandra. So we'll be going through logical operators as well. But for example, so um, if you guys are familiar with AND gate or gate. 1 and 0 will give me 0 0 and 1 will be the output will be 0 only when both the values are 1 the output will be 1 so it is giving logical operators results code to them so here the keyword is and similarly or and not these are the keywords other keywords are one second The rest or uh, the remaining keywords are global, from, for, return, is, lambda, with, yield, pass, phrase. These are the other keywords. In total, there are 33 keywords in Python. And one of the most used uh, keyword in, if you take data visualization libraries, machine learning libraries, consider Madhadra, is as as so it is used
giving will be using those words for accessing the library so as is all as is an important keyword which will be generally using so next topic will be identifiers so what are identifiers it is a name given to a container right it is a user defined name it can be a name for a wide uh, it can be a name given to identify a variable it can be a name for a function it can be a name for class module or an object so there is certain object or there is certain container and i have to identify it to is use it further that is why i'll be giving a name to it and that is called as identifier we are using it to identify certain uh-huh. objects since python is case sensitive capital s and small s will be different there are certain rules while naming identifiers while naming identifiers are it should start with upper case or lower case alphabet that is or it should start with an underscore ele dia ha kya diya special characters are available no special characters are allowed at the starting as first as as character so those are the two important uh, rules while you, you you have to follow when you are identi- using identifiers and few examples for that huh? identifiers can be So here, S, costs, and salary are the identifiers which we are using to give certain or assign certain values. And um, those are the two rules. Other than that, there are few, uh, few, or at least one. Another practice that is while giving any name, try giving it as a character, as a string of characters instead of single character. That is. is better than index is equal to 1 is better than i is equal to 2 just because it is it will make more sense to you as well as if you are giving your program to someone else so try using a sensible word instead of single characters and underscore will be used to separate or combine two user user names so this is about identifiers any doubt here until sir next concept will be variables a variable I, if i have to give a simple definition then it a variable is a container for a value which means a memory location is reserved for this value variable to store a value a variable the 
container. For a value, which means that there is a memory location allocated to that particular variable. Will be. Uh, one minute, Rakshita. Rakshita, ma'am, one minute. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Others who are joined today, uh, who are new to this batch. I joined today, sir. Yeah, please uh, mention it in the chat window. Who are joined today? Chat window, just type, madam. Okay. Please, others also type it. Nandish. Suhel, you are from which college? Please, all of you mention your college names. See those who joined today, I think uh, if people uh, missed a yesterday's session where we discussed about uh, uh, how to run your Python programs and how many of you are using the laptop right now, those who joined today. See, see others who are uh, joined today, okay. So you will be doing the coding along with the trainer, okay? So now the madam is teaching, okay? So you need to, you will be watching that session by your mobile, and you can re, you can also practice simultaneously with your systems, okay? So if in case, if in case, if you not installed, okay, Anaconda Navigator, like how many of you are not yet installed the Navigator? So please post it in the group including those who attended and uh, who joined today anaconda navigator how many of you not yet installed please mention it in the chat window haven't installed nandish okay nandish uh, you have laptop right with you Okay, fine. Others, please mention it who have not yet installed. Nikita, not yet installed. Nikita, you have a, a laptop? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, please, all of you start your laptop who and uh, installed it. So, we'll be showing you the alternate method where you can practice it now. Okay. Rushaba. So, Rushaba, Reshma, you guys have a laptop? Rushaba is not having uh, Reshma. Rushaba, you can take, you have uh, alternate. Reshma, you have it. Okay, Rushaba, you can take alternate uh, mobile. If you have it, you can still practice it. If you're having two mobiles, one you can watch and one you can practice it. Like if you can adjust for two hours session. Yeah. The same option which we are showing it, you can try it in the mobile option. The option we are showing it, so same thing, you can join it. <coughs> okay, so I'll be showing you now, you people, like how you can uh, um, use the online version in order to work. Okay, I'm just sharing my screen. Yeah, you guys are able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, please go yes, through. Sir. Yeah, please go through this. Uh, your Google account. Yes, sir. And you can see the mobile users who want to try this on mobile. So just open the Chrome browser. Just open the Chrome browser, 
and type collab chrome browser open the chrome browser and type collab so you can just click on the collab.research.google.com okay so you can cancel this examples always go to the file option here and start a new notebook this is how easily you can start a notebook only thing is you require a internet these files can be sh saved okay and practiced online itself either in mobile or in the case of your laptop or desktop both the cases you can do it so once this is done like you need to make sure whether it is connected or not here this option is there just click on that option the connection will get enabled once the connection is getting enabled you can practice here like uh, uh, Tanmay yes sir yeah what is the th uh, topic so madam covered right now sir the code okay so I'm just uh, running a code so you can always click on this run button in order to run the programs anytime so you can click on code uh, to create a new cell these are called as cells uh, first time users who join today first time so always you can click on this option and execute your codes okay always the cells are the places where you can write your codes so hash is for comments so you can write uh, codes here and execute it okay so for uh, as far as the markdown cell cell which you are using it in the Jupyter notebook the similar alternative here is text cell code cell and the text cell in text cell you can write down the all the documentation here in the text cell and in the code cell you can write down all the uh, codes and you can execute it in order to execute you will be clicking on this just the run button okay yes uh, Rakshita, you can continue. Sir? Yes. Anybody have a question? Sir, will you, sir, will you repeat that thing, sir? Means I am not getting a Google collab. Uh, are you searching in uh, Google search engine or any other alternate search engine you are using it? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Now please uh, go to the Google uh, Chrome. You are opening in Google uh, in mobile or mobile you are trying or in laptop you are trying it. Laptop sir, laptop. It's fine. You have Google Chrome opened. Yes sir, open sir. Uh, type Google.com. Yes sir, type. Google.com you opened. This is the Google main web page, right? Yes sir. Yes, Here sir. search collab. Okay, sir. I, uh, so just research.google.com can you see that yes sir you click on that what option it is asking you uh, filter no, no, same, same as this sir. yeah this option you are getting just you, yes, can, you can click on now you can go to the file here Select new notebook. Welcome to okay, sir. Yeah, you are good to go now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Any others from the group facing the issue? Nikita, Nandish. Uh, so others, you can try this alternate method. Okay, uh, you can continue your practice. Okay. Yes, ma'am, you can continue. Okay, sir, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
as we were talking about variables variable is a container for a value which means that a memory location is reserved for this particular variable to store a value reserved for this particular variable now e even here we'll be giving user defined name the same rules as we discussed for identifiers will apply for the naming of variables also that is it should not start with any special characters it should either start with underscore or alphabets it can also start with numbers 0 to 9 starting it should uh, but the first character should always be uh, character or a underscore so same rules will apply here also for naming a variable and then based on the data type of the variable the memory will be allocated so i said that a memory location is reserved for this uh, for variable santa so what depending on the type of variable the memory will be allocated Uh, uh, in yesterday's class, I was telling that we don't have to specify the data type here. So the interpreter itself will be allocating this memory location depending on the variable which we have given. Locates the memory. For example, if the counter is equal to 1000, this is an integer va value and miles will be equal to, this is a floating point number. is a string a group of characters now as you can see we have not specified any data type once i run the program the interpreter will find uh, will figure out which type of data it is and allocate the memory depending on it this this type of assignment is called as singular assignments we can also do multiple assignment that is works fine whereas and this works fine as well so this is different types of multiple assignments what doesn't work is it okay, come up this will throw an error So the two ways in which you can multiple assign, give multiple assignments is either this way or this. If um, next. Can you just uh, zoom? Uh, go to the Jupyter notebook. Yeah. Can you just zoom it? Zoom. Yeah. Uh, still more. Still more. Yeah. Still more. Yeah. That's perfect. Fine. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, <coughs> here. So uh, I can go to the page. Yeah. So what is the difference, guys? Here. A uh, boomika. Boomika VK. Sir? Yeah, uh, so what is the difference between this and this? 
and this so we, we assign uh, 100 uh, values to all a b c in first uh, sir example you said like you are assigning actually how many like one value to the multiple variables right multiple variables sir and here multiple values to the multiple variables in this example multiple variables yes sir yeah yeah thank you ma'am uh, thank you bhumika thank you ma'am yes, so continue ma'am ma'am in cell number wait should we write 2 comma 2 comma 2 three times ma'am uh, in this one ah uh, yes ma'am yeah that will be that will work correct because we are assigning three values to three variables so that will work fine you cannot assign three variables is equal to one value that is not possible yeah tanmay yes sir uh, one one more thing is like you mentioned this is a cell number 10 right so this is actually yes, not the cell number it is actually but for uh, like in order to ask you mentioned that number and looked at the number and you asked it okay that's okay uh, when you are asking the question it is fine but what is actually this is the like uh, rakshita ma'am can you uh, run that cell once again yes yeah once again you run it huh. so uh, uh, so tanmay can you, is are you observing what is happening the number is changing sir yeah that is actually how many times you uh, run that particular cell that's actually it is basically showing okay and uh, ma'am can you regenerate that error yes Yeah, please write down. Uh, yeah, so there is a error. Uh, so please, uh, so you have to understand. Like Tanmay, you asked the question, right? So this is basically not like when you assign multiple variables with a single value. That's not possible. That's what Madam said. So you can note down that error, all of you. Yeah, ma'am, you can just copy and paste it. That error. That would be better. <coughs> Now only the the last type. Yeah. like paste it in uh, yeah yeah chat that cell cell only that cell only come with the comment okay in that cell only see uh guys uh, one thing is like when you uh, working with uh, this uh, particular programming this uh, first time people are working and if you know that this is very simple to understand at the same time errors are very important okay so you will get uh, type error value errors and all. like such such kind of questions will be asked certain times in the uh, interviews okay so also try to remember this errors when you get the errors please make a note of that okay as madam is now uh, so no one or she will be like you know so like putting that errors in the cells okay so try to keep the remember that errors as much as possible yes ma'am continue please yes if if you guys are familiar with c programming there is a concept called as constant variables so what it means is there are certain vi- variable or certain values that i want it to be constant throughout my program to do that i have a keyword constant c o n s t so that is a keyword and it will make sure that particular variable is constant throughout your program that option is not present in python what we can do is we can just earn uh, we can just follow a different way of naming the variable that is using upper case letters so you cannot specify a va- variable as constant in python like you used to do in c programming after this we'll go for a standard data types which are available and supported by python so the data which is stored in memory can be of many types that is for example it can a person's age will be stored in a numerical value whereas his name will be in string format 
that is a sequence of characters and whereas if he has run this many miles it will be in a floating point number so like this different data will have diff allocated of different types of data will have different memory allocated so we'll see what are the different data types which are supported by python we'll see numbers first Uh, one more thing is, if you try to give data type in Python, we'll get an error. So you can see, if we specify the data type, then it will result in a syntax error. So you should you should not specify the data type. The interpreter will look after it. You don't have to worry about the data. Type. The variables which are now coming back to numbers the variables which are storing numerical values will come under this particular data type variables store numerical values come under this particular data type how do we uh, how do we create a number object number objects or number variables are created when we assign a value to a variable are created when you assign value to variables that is for example we are one variable 1 is equal to 2 variable 2 is equal to I'm assigning I'm declaring different variables and assigning values to them um, uh, sorry for the interruption uh, minute yes I know Yeah, uh, there's a people who uh, joined uh, right now. Okay, so there are three to four people who joined. I think uh, so. You all joined for the first day. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys, who already joined the classes because uh, in one hour, like, so these uh, like students are joining till uh, tomorrow. Will we are actually allowing the new students to join? Okay. So just in case. Okay. So there won't be interruptions in the. From uh, new classes onwards from Monday. Okay, so guys, like who joined just now? Okay, so what you can note down is like we are starting with uh, we are actually uh, explaining now the basic concepts of Python. Okay, like concept of variable. Okay, ma'am, can you just scroll up uh, from the beginning? Yeah. So we just uh, discussing identifiers, variables. Uh, data type flow concepts and operators so now right now we are discussing about the uh, identifiers and variables so like in c program here also we have uh, variables like nomenclature like uh, we can have a alphabetical characters alphanumerical characters uh, to be given as a variable names okay and you can combine both alphabets and numerics along with the underscore symbol okay so this is the example s is equal to internship is an example of a character type data okay and the salary is equal to 1234 this is an example of a numerical value assignment okay and then just scroll down <coughs> so you can you can ha have any kind of data type okay you can store integer type data you can store float you can store a, a character type is also called as string type of data so basically we will be doing all this programming in uh, something called a Jupyter notebook okay in case if you people have the now the uh, system okay you can always uh, work with that okay so you can just check on a Google collab notebook and open it and try it or else right now you can note down all these codes 
in your notepad and then <coughs> watch the class video uh, about 10 minutes okay so you'll understand like how do you can run the python programs okay if you're unable to okay otherwise you can post as a questions and we'll be able to help you out with uh, how do you run the codes also otherwise uh, we can arrange a extra class for that okay <coughs> Yes, uh, can you just come down? Yeah, so there are various kinds of ways we can assign a value. See here, A is equal to B is equal to C. It indicates you are assigning 100 to the all the three variables. In one instance, if you want a common value to be assigned to a three different variables or any number of variables, you can assign it. Or you want three different variables to three different values, in this instance, you can do it and map just scroll down here in python you don't require a, uh, to do you don't require to uh, declare a variable so that will aid in syntactical errors because python interpreter will take care of the uh, variable assignments and data type uh, like uh, you know what data type a variable should have it okay it will be taken care by the interpreter so now, so uh, so just directly you want to assign a value numeric or character, any values, you can directly assign it. So without any headache. That's the best part of the Python programming. And here Madam is showing you with the three to four different variables with a different value assignment. So there is as much we have discussed so far. Please uh, uh, like uh, get a hold into this, like, you know, whatever the teaching is, flow is going on. I will just continue. So as we were seeing, there are different types of numerical values which we can assign. We saw integers, floating point number, and we can also assign complex numbers and that is now if I Printing all the variables. One second. So you can see there are different uh, numerical values. I've just printed them. So Python will support four different numerical types. One is integer, that is signed integer which means that this data can hold signed integer that is um, it can have positive values as well as negative values so first type is signed integer integer which means that it will have both positive and negative values and the range will be between minus two one four four seven two plus two one four seven that is which is a 32 bit which means two to the power of minus two to the power of 31 So the what this means is you can give value between minus two one four seven two plus two one four seven that will come under signed integer. Next type is long int, which will which 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 mean sorry, which means that it it can have unlimited length, but we no longer use it in Python and upper 
Python 3 uh, mail uh, uh, version Sally, we are not using it. We no longer use it. Give minus two one four eight, ma'am. So, sorry. What happens if we go beyond minus two one four seven in sign integer? It won't take the value. It will give an error. The, you don't get error actually, Tanmay. So the truncation will happen. So the value you'll be uh, getting the final output is the the maximum value or a minimum value, whatever you are trying to assign it. value is float it will have a decimal point it will have a whole number and a decimal point as we have used it here next will be complex number it will have a real and imaginary part If I want to delete a variable, I can use del keyword, del and variable name, and that will delete my variable. Done. Ma'am, complex number again, J use more about it, I know use more about it, ma'am. Ha'am, mad about it, and you can use both, but we use J, it's the same name. Yeah, as a, like, it's up to you, you can either use I or J, like, can you just try that, if you can show it, as an example. That uh, that way you can understand it better. Sir, syntax error work is sir. Check check it. Huh? So yeah uh, 2 plus 3i is uh, supported or not support invalid okay here in python it is not valid okay so we get confused with this uh, matlab which supports both sorry because in scientific notations you get family you can use both i and j but here in python uh, you can only use j okay good point shu prasad <coughs> yes please uh, see uh, I guess uh, here like you have the variables and uh, with the range right integer float and all uh, can you just scroll up Guys, can you see the screen? Shri Prasad? Yeah. See, mm -hmm. when you take a variable, you declare the, you assign the value. Okay, I take uh, theta, I take uh, pi is equal to 3.142. And uh, I can check the data type of a variable by using the function called as type and 
so I am checking one more variable type that is pi so wait a minute just it is waiting to be connected once it is connected you can get your results yeah one is in type and more one more is float type okay so you have a variable which is integer type and one more is a float type okay so can i pass on some value to the variable okay now i'll pass on uh, what will happen when i pass this value 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, 10, 8 9 okay 0 let me start with uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 Again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Very long variable name. Okay. So let me try to print that variable. And see what will happen. <coughs> I'm getting 1, 2, 3, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it is all coming now. No issues. Let me try with one more times so actually we were having 27 digits now let us we have now more than that so still it is adding up okay let me add few more values 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 it's a very larger one you are able to uh, get that values okay so and I will try to multiply that variable okay multiply by uh, 10 to the power of 6 so you are getting how many digits 6 digits okay see the advantage here with this uh, python it tries to uh, add the memory as much as required it gives you the memory whatever you would like to uh, assign like take it like it is giving you that much memory so without any truncation effect without doing the truncation for that number okay so once you reach uh, let me try with some other value You can find that still it is uh, you, you can get the required result okay like this like you know in the python the length of the variable uh, the, the value you are going to assign it okay so it can be it will automatically extend it in the these latest versions okay <clears throat> so this is actually uh, the latest version of this uh, particular python okay but you need not to focus on this as of now but still uh, in case you would like to know it okay you can check out the what is the maximum minimum values here a int and uh, float can accommodate okay and if i multiply this with the 0.12 that will be decimal it's showing e to the power of 58 e to the power of 58 1.234 into e to the power of 58 means it's at uh, exponential power of 58 okay and i'm just trying now with a new value 9 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 exponentially power 68 okay so your python is actually accommodating the largest variable as much as possible that's the best part with your python but you try this thing and you see like you get you start getting the errors or not errors you start getting the truncation effect okay Tanmay or Shiv having any questions no sir okay but you said that signed integer it will be only till 2147 no sir but no, 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 no 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 it is not 2147 like I given the range you can check that in the chart window so madam like just given like it starts from that 2 to the power of 32 by 2 to the power 32 is not uh, 2147 actually you check it out it starts yeah, with i just came. she just wrote it or uh, not 2147 like you know so it extends 
uh, it is there in the chart when I can take you can check yeah two one four seven eight three six four eight like if you are having a uh, sign integer in that case this is the range what you will be getting it okay yeah <coughs> uh, now um, so guys, uh, that's uh, about your uh, data types. Okay, so now I'll, I'll, I'll consider like uh, mm -hmm. so Let me ask a simple question so, Reshma KS Yes sir Reshma, which year you born? 2000 or 19? 27 5 1999 9. okay so i return this 1 triple like this okay and then i return age there's one more variable which is 22 okay. so i'll ask uh, tanmay yes sir so yeah Mm. Uh, tell me, uh, like which location you're from? Location, Bangalore. Okay. So college. Might sir, MIT. Uh, so it is MIT. Okay. College location. Sir, Bangalore. It is Bangalore. Uh, Suhel? Yes, sir. Your name is Suhel. Okay. And you are from? Chitradurga. So it is uh, Chitradurga. So what's your height? 5.6. 5.6. Okay. I've taken few variables like this okay but um, what I want to do is here is I'll start showing you a few uh, example cases okay uh, what about uh, Reshma is one triple line is it a numerical integer or a character type uh, age is equal to age is equal to 22 uh, how about height in uh, can we check all of this? Yeah, all of you guys try it now quickly from your end. Print, uh, sorry, print. So you'll be typing. Uh, I'll check the type. Yes. Okay. So its class is int. At the same time, if I'm checking for the uh, age, so check this for age. So age is a uh, string type like that. Various uh, data types are there. Okay. Now, I want to combine these three, like. So I want to tell that uh, I want to combine these three. Okay. Print Tanmai plus college plus location. Okay. If I do something like this, what will happen? So it will try to add all the three strings. That is Bangalore, might and ba Mangalore all the three variables will get added and you'll get a one new variable okay bangalore might mangalore without any space because it doesn't know about the spacing if you provide the spaces in your input strings you can definitely find out that space okay bangalore might mangalore okay. you can combine the strings we can this is called as concatenation we can concatenate strings fine okay now i'll try for one more this one 
okay here print name plus location 2 plus height I am trying this one now okay. so here also I give one space one space I'll be getting an error. So what is the error I'm getting? Numerical value to string. So here? Oh, type error. Oh, what is this error? Can you read that? Can, can only, only concatenate string. Can not float. only concatenate string, not float. See, height is a float variable. You know that. So we are trying to concatenate height which is float to a uh, with a string type so that is not possible okay strings cannot be concatenated with float on I'll show you one more example uh, I'll try here with the uh, another variable that is reshma with the age here also you will be getting an error guys okay i'm just commenting this the unsupported operand type s for int and string okay so we are trying to concatenate a string with the numerical okay so that is also not possible that means strings with int not supported you are trying to add them so that is also not supported okay in that case if i want exclusively that kind of operation what you can do is okay so provided if you are having a numerical values okay we can do the type casting we can apply type casting so what are the type casting can do it here um, so you can try it to a string of height if you do it if you do it string of height you can actually get your result expected so one minute one minute mm, yeah a error is actually coming here so just it comment out yeah so help Chitraduga. 5.6 I'm getting that result expected so that means you can combine them okay by doing that so now it is a string type only right so that you can do it so how we did it we applied the type casting here okay so there are many ways you can do the type casting say example you have the uh, variable age which is uh, 22 okay so if you check the data type of that it will be uh, string now I will write a is equal to um, int of age so print the type so that is the data type conversion we are applying it first is string and then integer type so we can do the reverse as well okay so we can try the reverse so first value is a numerical converting it to the string type i can do the reverse also okay so when i try one more example case that is so this is this is actually string okay so i'll give string here reshma okay so if you're trying to do this integer type conversion this fails okay so when you're trying to convert the type casting when you're doing it make sure the content within that inverted code should be a numerical value there should be a numerical value but though it is a string type but here you should have a numerical literals you cannot the string letter that is not the characters it should be out formed with a numerical values okay so in well literal for int with the base and reshma so this is not understood by the type casting function 
so here when you try to convert a character to int so it fails so you are getting an error there okay this is the value error so which will be getting it here yes guys i'm just uh, going to run time and just one second yes guys Hey guys, please try these things now, all of you. Starting with here, I guess. Please uh, post it in the uh, chat window, like if you are completed. If you guys completed, post it in the chat window. Uh, now we will be doing. Um, uh, we will now cover. Excel, right? Mm. Uh, input and output uh, reading is completed. No, right? How to use the input function? So you can always read a input at the runtime by using the input function. We can ask the user to enter the current input which they want and want. Okay, say like uh, I'm taking a variable called as name. Okay, enter the enter the name. Okay, and then I'll ask the person to enter the age. Okay, enter the age. So input. Age equal to. Then I'll ask the person. Sir, I'm sharing the screen, sir. The screen is not visible. Oh yeah, so we missed it. Yeah, I uh, hope it is visible. Now we are checking out input and output. How do we can give the input and. Uh, uh, print it. So already we have shown the usage of the print statement. Now I am showing the usage of the input function. Uh, height. Input function okay, will allow the user to enter the uh, values at the runtime. Okay. So I am asking the user to enter the height. Okay. Uh, height h equal to something like that. So any kind of strings you can enter it here. It doesn't matter then wait is it just i'm asking the user to enter it wait say i use the proper naming here and i just use the uh, suitable variable and now i'm reducing it now i'm not at all using it okay it doesn't cause us any issues at all okay we can enter the values name is uh, what i'll take it like nandish Nandish age 21, height, uh, what is the height Nandish? 5.8, 6, whatever it may be. Okay. Weight, okay. Uh, weight will be 65. Yeah. So three variables or uh, four variables, four assignments are done. Okay. If I want to print, I can print all the three variables now print name comma age comma height comma weight I'm printing all the variables okay. so please all of you just try to check you have this uh, four variables okay. we have assigned the four values it becomes easier right next time I want somebody else name to be uh, print it okay this time I want uh, you know uh, another person's name like say example I am taking here the person called is Varshini okay so age again 21 height 5.4 so 
so this time I'm taking the weight okay 52 yeah so now if you print it so you'll be getting another percent details that becomes easier right so if you want to change the values at the runtime you can always do it using the input function so better understanding I'll put equal to here and here I'll write weight equal to okay, so you can easily understand it can say Akshay age 21 height 6 weight 67 like this you can enter the different values at different instances now let me show you one more thing about this if you check the type of any variables, any variable, okay, all the classes are string all the classes are string Nikita SM yes sir Nikita tell me what is the meaning of this one if all the variables type is string what is the meaning of that when you take input function okay when you use the input function by default when we use input function default it considers all values as string type okay that's the problem associated with it okay so what is the problem here okay Say example, I want to multiply height into weight. Okay, so I cannot do that, right? Now, now I am writing uh, Nikita. Okay, so then age 21, height 5.3, so weight 55. Something like that values I am giving it. Okay, now actually I want to multiply these two height into weight. Okay, so just in order to calculate BMI, body mass indexing. Okay body mass index like we can do that okay just i want to multiply two variables that is age sorry height into multiplied by weight what i am getting so i'm getting an error here cannot multiply sequence by non integer type of string okay the reason is what they are all string type how can how to, how to overcome from that do you want this uh, Nikita these values to be string or integer? Rushaba? Okay, Bhumika came. Yes sir. Bumika, so we you, you like these three variables as string or character a string or integer or a float integer. so you want uh, some values as integer some values as a float because usually height and weight will be float type right yes sir age will be usually what an integer type integer. It, can, it can also be a uh, float because you can mention your age as 21 years 21.6 meaning 21 years 6 months something like that right but name column name variable you want it like a string only like if you want to do that typecasting where do you will apply here should we apply typecasting or we should we apply this typecasting when we reading the values itself which is better so re what the time of reading the values itself if we typecast them that would be better okay so how can we do that so here we can do that like this int of input 
all values you assign it will become integer type height so height will be float type okay even weight can be float okay so now i am going to check the data type Execute this. It is asking you to enter the values. So I'll I'll give the values as uh, so I'll give the va values Vishal. Okay. Age is uh, thirty. One minute. Okay. Here is spelling mistake. There is a spelling mistake, so we were unable to complete it. So we know the okay. I'll give the values as 23, some values 40. What is the height? Uh, 5.3, uh, 6, 55.4 kilos. Now, if you check the uh, data types one is string second one is integer third one is float and fourth one is also float if i try to multiply if i try to multiply these values height into weight i can do that easily without any problem here the reason is what is the reason so their integer and float can be multiplied the result today is again a float value so we were able to do a simple project also program also here and also we learned how to do the typecasting when you are using an input function okay yes guys please try this now try this Sir, in answer, I'm not getting the decimal points. Sir. Uh, it depends. So, so, what is the values you are get, uh, providing the input? Tell me. Twenty one and five point five. Twenty one and five. Both you are converting into int and int or float. Both are in float, sir. Uh, one age is int, height is float. No, sir. Age also I gave float and checked it, sir. But also I'm not getting the similar values. Just post your code in the chat window. I'll check it out. You are doing the same thing or you are trying something different? So I'm getting decimals anyways. Check your one second. No, I cannot see that. Uh, please post it, Tanmay. Post it, post it in the chat window. Copy and uh, paste it in the chat window.
now is it visible sir one minute because just uh, wait a minute wait a minute yes sir see now <coughs> uh, i want you people to try this one code where uh, let us try this same code like along with me you can try it okay. i'm going to ask the user to enter the temperature okay that is equal to input enter t is equal to uh, location we enter the location location is equal to so here i need to convert this temperature right into it should be an integer variable so not integer it should be a float so let's convert it to the float type because i was expecting temperature to be a, a float value okay once the you enter this value i'm just printing it okay at uh, this particular location whatever we are mentioning okay the temperature is equal to is comma temperature so we are replacing it here with the temperature okay is temperature now i'll run this okay temperature i'm ent entering as 32 In the place i'm writing is uh, like chitradurga at chitradurga temperature is 32 okay now your task is to while printing convert the temperature to fahrenheit okay so now convert the temperature to fahrenheit and print it try this case So what is the formula to do the conversion? How do you do the conversion? 9 by 5 C plus 32 C. 9 divided by 5. Okay. So you will be doing C into 9 divided by 5 plus 32 yes so this is how we'll be doing the conversion c here is what temperature variable okay replace that c with the temperature variable just a simple code to get to the flow of python coding In other words, you can simply write it as 1.8 C into 1.8 plus 32 also. You can write like this.
Yes, uh, how do we do that? Anyone completed this code? Yeah, the complete Madira. Yeah, post it, post the code. In chat window. Abu, so, so post it. Okay, fine, no problem. So here you'll be printing, okay, the temperature, temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to comma temperature, okay into 1.8 plus uh, what is the value you will be adding a 32 it right if I'm giving the value 32 it is again uh, location BLR okay, 89.6 Fahrenheit okay so that's the simple conversion we did just to get the hold of how we use the Python print statement how the multiplication additions are done. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Sir, like in chat box I post the using another variable conversion. Yeah, yeah, that's the our location temperature. Yeah, that is also fine. It's it's good actually. Okay. So you can have a variable C which is equal to temperature into nine divided by plus thirty two. This is also good. So you are up here okay Tanmay has written this code guys so you can also take this code this also works okay so do the conversion and then print it okay one minute there is some involved syntax what is that what is missing here guys at location come on temperature is yeah, yeah here is the problem yeah, here I write comma Again, anything is missing here. Again, one more comma. No, thirty two location PLR. At Bangalore temperature is 80, 32 degrees Celsius or 89.6 Fahrenheit. Okay. So that's how you can do it. Core more intuitive, like uh, like you want to make it better for the user. So try to give the suitable comments or suitable wordings here and the comments if you want to write it for the understanding purpose. You can add them at the end. Okay, guys. So that is about all about the basics of I/O statement, input and output statements. Okay. So yeah, so far, uh, if you guys have faced any questions, any doubts, uh, please let us know. So please uh, type in the chat window if you have guys uh, faced any issues, any questions. Okay. So now we will summarize the things what we learned today. Okay. Uh, Rakshita ma'am. Sir, starting I ask one thing. The desktop is not visible. Desktop is not visible? Yes, sir. Now it is not visible? Uh, no, sir. One minute. I will show that, sir, in my screen. Okay, okay.
Sir, is my screen visible? Yeah, yeah, it's casting. Yeah. In this, I'm not getting this just desktop, sir. One, one second. I'll just uh, increase my screen resolution. Uh, you are not getting the desktop here. Yes, sir. Scroll down. Maybe like uh, in your uh, file option, desktop is not there. Which uh, Windows version you are using it? Sir, 10, I guess. 10, sir. 10. Uh, I'm not sure. Like it has to come. Okay. Mm, contacts. Like you can just click on that folder option once again. Click on the folders. Uh, refresh it once. Try it. There is a refresh button. Yeah. No, it is not showing you. Maybe that uh, that option is not enabled in it seems. Okay, so what you can do is you can go to documents and create a folder in the documents and use it. Okay, uh, you can like manually go to the documents. Manually go to the documents. Okay, so here is the documents. Create a folder. write down uh, MLP MLP okay, leave it okay now come back to Jupyter go to documents now documents yeah so is that folder is not visible here Folder is also not. Just uh, refresh it once. Try refreshing. You have any virtual machine? No, right? What? No. You have any other, another user here in your system? No, sir. No. Go back to the folder option once again. Manually. And yeah, come back here. Okay, okay. Leave it. Leave it. Go back to so Jupyter notebook only. Go back to Jupyter notebook. Yeah, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. So come back to folders option. Yeah. Can you scroll down? Scroll down. Okay. Scroll up. Okay. So go back to your folder option manually in desktop. Yeah, here one second. Click on the documents here. Uh, below the desktop option, you can find OneDrive, this PC. Then you have a desktop. No, uh, below, below, no, below, below. Come down, down, still down, 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 down. Yeah. Click on new, next documents is there. Click on yeah. Click on it. Yeah, here you have Arduino, LabVIEW, MLP folder is there. It is same. Okay. I'm sure. Just try to restart the Jupyter notebook and try it once. Tanmay. Tanmay, wait, Tanmay. Okay. So I'll just conclude the summary and I'll help you out with this one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Rakshita? Yes, sir. Yeah, so we have started with? We started with elements of Python. Let me present the screen. No, it's, it's okay. So we have started with elements of Python. Guys, so this is what we started, right? Uh, then we discussed. We learned mm -hmm. about our reserved words, identifiers. variables and what are the different data types which are supported by python See, so now we learned about variables 
data types so we then check the or like we tried int float and strings right so then we learned about uh, concatenation data type uh, conversion concatenation concatenation Yes, one second, guys. Sorry. Mm. Good, at least you people speak now. At least when screen is not visible. Yes. Uh, Bumika. Yes, sir. So we learned about concatenation. What is concatenation? What we do it here? String to string is possible. String with a string possible. Uh, string with int is not possible, right? Yeah. Our float is also not possible. That we checked. Okay. So in data type conversion, we checked int to string. String to int string to float also okay so then we check talked about io functions we checked input method and the print statement okay so in input what is the common thing input always uses always um, converts all data to string type this we learned okay so then we use the data type conversion on that and we tried two examples on this so this is the summary of the day okay in between also we discussed about how to use the google collab right we also discussed about in between the google collab so this is the summary of the day guys okay if you guys have any questions please you can start asking it now